and we start our show with an interview with the founder of the Jewish Heritage Alliance, a flourishing organization dedicated to reaching and educating millions of people in Latin America, the Caribbean, and beyond about the story of Sfarad and the Converso Jews exiled from Spain and Portugal, plus the vast numbers alive today who are actually descendants of these crypto Jews. Hello and welcome, Michael. And I want to start by your story. You're a longtime tour operator in Brazil and South America. How did you discover the link between Brazil and the story of Sfarad? That's a good question because I actually stumbled over the story of Sfarad. And my specialty uh, was Latin America, and Brazil was a big part of that. And uh, a colleague, a Brazilian colleague of mine, asked me a question about six and a half years ago. Uh, asked me if I knew where the first uh, synagogue was built in the Americas, at which time I had no clue. I guessed New York. Uh, he said, no. He said, Recife, Brazil. I would say I had a huge wow moment. Uh, it was really a watershed uh, part of my life. Uh, it really was. You know, I tell people that when we sit to, to the Seder, we go, we go from Yitzhak Mitzrayim to the Shoah. Uh, and obviously, and we skip this whole segment of Jewish history. Once I understood how profound a story was, both historically and, and, and the consequence that it produced, not the least of which is the diaspora that we, we know of today, the Jewish diaspora, I found it to be a very profound story and a story that was neglected, a story that's just missing in action. Michael, next on your journey, you met a charismatic rabbi from Sao Paulo who spent over two decades engaging with the Converso community in Brazil. Can you explain just how big and significant the percentage of the population of Brazil and the rest of Latin America that actually come from crypto Jews? Uh, rabbi Ventura, I, I refer to him as a trailblazer, if you will. He is uh, an Orthodox Jew that was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil, uh, and he too stumbled over the story of uh, Sefarad in the Converso community, which is a huge story in Brazil. I saw the amazing work that he was doing, helping people come back. In Brazil itself, which the audience needs to know, is a huge, vast country. It's larger than continental United States. Uh, it's four-fifths of the continent of South America, 210 million people, important to note. We, we believe that at least one quarter to as many as possibly one-third of the entire population of Brazil are descendants of Sephardim. That one out of every four Latinos in the world is a descendant. Huge numbers. Michael, would you say that people in Brazil and Latin America have any clue as to their Jewish, uh, crypto-Jewish roots? We believe that most have no idea because we're talking somewhere upwards of 200 million. I'm gonna repeat that number. We're talking upwards of 200 million people in the world today who are the census of Sfarad. We think many, if not most, don't know, but a significant uh, in, in the millions are aware. By definition, crypto means hidden. So the, the people who were forced to convert found themselves in a very precarious situation because they had to act as Christians by day and, and try and hold on to the tradition in, in, in hiding. So develop the culture of, of, of hidden traditions, things such as, for example, uh, lighting candles on Friday night. The grandmother would go down to the basement to light candles. Uh, the way they would sweep the floor to the center and not take the, the dirt out through the door, but through the window. Strange, strange customs. And you're doing a great job. Meanwhile, you're overseeing multi-tiered initiatives like a mobile capsule exhibit uh, that is also was traveling to Porto in uh, Portugal. And we also covered it at the ANU, the Museum of the Jewish People, before COVID. But obviously, COVID put a damper on, on the capsule moving around. But also, you've taken part in a big educational webinar series. Explain why Corona was kind of, uh, uh, even though not a blessing, but a blessing in disguise. The exhibit is called At the Crossroads of Sephirat in the Footsteps of the Crypto Jews. So having such a mobile exhibit, which is going to be distributed all over the world, is one means of getting the story out. You know, necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, so like many people, we, we had to turn uh, towards the Internet when the pandemic hit. Again, we recently had uh, the privilege and the honor to have Dr. Isaac Amon join Jewish Heritage Alliance. He himself is a descendant of Sepharad. Uh, he happens to be a researcher in the, in the subject. He's also an attorney. And if anyone has watched the three-part series that uh, he put on, 
called Sfarad, the untold story to change the world, I think we all will agree that he did an amazing job. Also, the Jewish Heritage Alliance is making inroads here in Israel. You've managed to get the support of the likes of Israeli President Itzhak Herzog and the World Zionist Organization. Why is Israel's role so key to the future? We have launched something we call the Converso Israel Initiative. What it is fundamentally is us uh, bringing attention to the government of Israel and friends of Israel to wake up and smell the coffee because we are, we, we've entered a, a very precarious time in terms of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment all, all over the world. Jewish influence in America and the West is on decline. The Jewish community itself is splintered. The other group that's very important and influential for Israel is the evangelical community. That support is, is on a decline. So our point is that here we have millions and millions of descendants of Jews who uh, could very well fill the void. The evangelical community and the Jewish community combined uh, are, are, are minuscule compared to the number of uh, conversos. So we have put together a program to uh, introduce the conversion community to Israel. And the idea is to bring them on, on, on tours to Israel, getting them emotionally, emotionally connected with Israel, which is actually their past. And all of these thousands, if not soon to be millions of people that may come and visit Israel, will go back to wherever it is that they live and become ambassadors of goodwill for, for Israel and the Jewish people. Michael, thank you so much for that insightful discussion.